Our heroes survived their first battle encounter, but they've got a long way back to the Bronze Citadel. Do you think they'll play I'm Thinking of a Thing? I would play I'm Thinking of a Thing. This week on D&D Minus. All right, welcome back to Talkin' D, the early part of the show that I cut after the next episode comes out. I'm here with Achoom the Cat and Heath and Wright. Achoom, what an amazing episode last week. Wow, the first combat encounter. How did you guys feel about it? Oh my goodness. It was, you know, it was it was spell binding. Pardon my pun. <laughs> spell. Nice. <laughs> I'm Do you sorry, have any I'm questions so for me? I, you said I was here, interviewer, and then you asked the Chum a direct question. You didn't say fucking shit to me when there was a giant pause where you would have maybe added a question. Honestly, I don't know why you invited him on the show. I don't either. But apparently. I will tell you. So to to recap, we were flying through the air on our beds. We had been catapulted down. We figured out how to use our sheets as a sort of Zelda esque chicken, if you will, to slow down our fall. <laughs> I was thinking hang glider, but yeah. I was also too. thinking hang glider, yeah, but you know what? You Chicken's know what? good. I haven't played any of the new ones, so you don't cut <laughs> yourself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we fall and almost hit the lava, but we do not, and out comes a bunch of fucking serpents, and there's a giant rift in one side, and we get those serpents, and there's a little guy who's like, hey, uh, watch out, there's gonna be serpents behind you, and then we fought the serpents, and then we decided to go through the rift. No, you didn't go through the rift. We didn't go through you the did rift. not Fuck go through the rift. That. I don't remember what happened. All right. It hasn't come out yet. An excellent summary. Achoom, thank you for joining us so much on Talking D. Heath? You know, it's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Achoom. You're welcome. Did you want to finish your thought? Nope. That was it. Oh, you were just saying my name again? <laughs> yep. For no reason. That's it. Cool. Bye. Yeah. Also, <laughs> me. The opening Bye. credits are happening right now. <laughs> Guitar screech. As the last fire snake dies, the small devil slides down the pile of shields and bodies to stand at your feet and says, Gentlemen and animals, I am Charun Dracaris. Named for patron Charun Dracaris. Thank you, Charun. And I... I'm in your debt. Uh, well, would you know that uh, gentlemen are animals? Actually, I just wanted to mm. point that out. I just I don't want to let I don't want you to consider my compatriots lesser than myself. You know. Oh, forgive Crazy. me. Thank you. I don't know if I'd call myself gentle, actually. Oh, but sure. Uh, this is the front lines. Yeah, I guess something terrible happened. I, it was the most awful accident. Uh, several of the featherfall. Spells that must have been put on our cots malfunctioned, and my entire platoon, uh, along with a couple of other platoons that I've seen since I've been up here, plummeted into the lake of fire. Uh, we must tell the general immediately. He'll be heartbroken when he finds out he's been sending his most precious frontline forces to their certain doom. Yes, we must. Uh, how do we get back? Oh, don't worry about that. I can get us back to Avernus with a teleport spell. Though, for the sake of security, we're going to have to go to my childhood bedroom. I, I really should set up a permanent circle somewhere, but it, that's the most familiar place I know. Feels like a lie or something. I would like to do an insight check on this demon because this feels super sus. Thank you. No, like he was named after a patron, so it's not going to kill us, right? Nine. Nine. Yeah, you do, you do not trust this guy. There is something weird about him. Yeah, like when he suggested his childhood bedroom is the place we have to go to do a spell. <laughs> Was that what we didn't trust? So let, let me ask you a question. Yeah. You're from here? Avernus. Yeah, I'm a devil. Is this Avernus? Yeah. This battlefield is Avernus? Yeah, this whole plane is oh, Avernus. The it's the first level of hell. Yeah. So you live around here? I live in the Bronze Citadel. 
which is back there. Yeah. Guys, we're we're like a catapult away, right? I mean Okay. Yeah. How do we get back to the Bronze Citadel? Well, we could walk across a couple hundred miles that way. We were catapulted a couple hundred catapult. miles. It's a very strong catapult. I just realized it when I said it. It's a strong catapult. It's magic catapult. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very strong catapult. It does a catapult thing. Don't ask questions. Magic. It's a magic catapult. That's how far I pushed. Oh, I'm start. I'm getting the sense that we're going to have to go with the other option. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now you can do whatever you want. I could teleport us back into the city. From your bedroom. Okay. Couldn't we just build a catapult that shoots that far ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> and go back? I mean, there's all these bones around. I guess if you had the spare time, you could try and build a catapult. Uh, no. Uh, why don't you teleport us? You want to teleport? Mm. Can I roll for building a trebuchet for all of us right now? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Give me a, I think that's like a survival check. I used to have a spell that would totally do this. God damn it. Snedrick would come in so handy. Okay, that's a seven. Yeah, you like take two bones and lean them against each other and then you try and sit on them and they snap underneath you and you hurt your butt. <laughs> oh. What are you doing, man? I hurt my... I tried to build a thing. Forget it. Why would a catapult be two bones? You didn't even employ a third bone. <laughs> I thought it would just it would be like Those one. Those bones and then were people. It was... <laughs> the second would just... Bones are just like stuff you can fuck around with, man. It's, what? The head. I want to try and intimidate him into building the teleport right here or like, you know, force him to say why he can't build the teleport right here. Sure. But I'm trying to see if I can do that without just doing a straight intimidation check. Wait, did he say that we need to go back to the Iron City to teleport? No, yeah. Let me clarify just before you try to intimidate him out of a thing he didn't say. He said he's going to teleport you all back to the Bronze Citadel, but he needs to teleport you to his childhood bedroom because the teleport spell and the magical users of you would know this the more familiar you are with a place, the easier it is to teleport there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, sure, sure, sure. Question, why didn't you teleport yourself before? So teleport actually like takes a minute. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but there were these big fire snakes. I mean, they did actually come out of the lava after we showed up. Oh, no, but they would occasionally come. What I'm telling you is occasionally I'd be sitting on top of a big pile of bones and I'd be like, all right, seems like those fire snakes are asleep. And I would be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, getting ready. And then all of a sudden I'd hear, Sss, because they would know I was busy with something. They'd start to climb up the pile of bones and I'd have to fly over to the next pile of bones. And I'd be like, not today, snakes. And they'd be like, Sss. and I'd be like, all right, whatever, man. Sure, That's on sure, you. Sure, sure, That's sure. on you. You know what? You know what? I fully believe this guy. We should do it. Thank you. Let's do it right now. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Let's do it. Wait, hey, hey, hey. Don't <laughs> listen. Don't listen to them. I think he's named after a patron, so he's not going to be. Like here to totally talk this. <laughs> or maybe it was a patron that like didn't donate enough. And this is Eli's <laughs> new thing. He's gonna like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, Ooh, really? Yeah. The one dollar <laughs> patrons just get named after people in hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other way around, but yes. I mean, his story checks out. We would have like gotten into the fire if we hadn't done a pretty fucking sweet dexterity saving throw. So uh I I assume that most of his platoon got lost in the sea. A fire. Right. Lake of fire? Splotches of fire. Yeah, I just, I think he's full of shit. <laughs> Would you like to stay here? I mean, I don't think he's going to really take us back. Oh. And uh, you care about life so much. I know, true. Yeah, I should be like, let's go, yeah. <laughs> gotta, gotta play the role. Gotta play the role. Okay. Gentlemen? I guess I'm in. So we're just gonna like, we're gonna let this guy just like zoop us to his childhood bedroom. And then from there to the bronze citadel again. No, his his childhood bedroom is in the bronze citadel. Right, that that is correct, right, Eli? Yeah, that that's, is correct. Yeah, that's the part of the bronze citadel. Okay, so we're just gonna let this guy zoop us back to his childhood bedroom in the bronze citadel. Correct. So we can let the lady know why everything is uh, kind of going to shit, I guess, or at least the captain, whoever you know, the guy who. Who catapulted us. I have a feeling we will not end up in the Bronze Citadel, but sure. Cool. Is you, <laughs> are you going to zoop us like one at a time or just like all together? No, I was going to zoop you all at the same time. I was going to be like, uh, I'm going to make a little circle of teleportation here. 
you guys keep an eye out for the snakes. Then we all stand inside it. And I try my very best. And we end up in my childhood bedroom. As as a very wise little blue engine once said, I think you can. Thank you. <laughs> How old are you right now? Like, oh, I'm real young. I'm like a really, really, really young. I'm like 754,966 years young. So, you know, I understand that okay. you guys don't want a newbie like me showing you guys around. But if you want, I could just teleport myself and you can fucking walk home. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure, I'm pretty sure Eli will make up some stuff to happen along the way. It'll probably be, uh, you know, lame -er than this, you know. But but I'll do it. I'll go home myself, and then you guys can just fucking walk. Maybe you could do a little <laughs> development, a little interactive character conversation. This is really tempting. We're in. We're in. You can quit roasting us. We're in. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna lie. There was like a portal at some point, and I wanted to just jump in. You did. It. You did so, want to jump through into the demon <laughs> dimension. So which, you know uh, what? Why don't we just do this? All right, everybody. Yeah. Here we go. Hamina, 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 hamina. And he takes a couple of minutes. All right. So. This is how teleporting works in D&D, &D, and teleporting will be a factor in this game. So here's how teleporting works. Teleporting, again, if they're very familiar with it, they're going to roll a D100. And depending on how familiar they are, it will either be a mishap, a similar area, off target, or on target. I'm so happy. Now, this is a very familiar place to him, and I will not roll this dice. In fact, Heath, I'm going to have you roll this dice. If you roll between a 25 and a 100, you will land on target. Anything lower than that, 14 to 24, you will land off target. I'll explain what that means if it happens. 6 to 13, that will be a similar area. And between a 1 and a 5, that will be a mishap. So Heath, please roll a D100 for us. We should each roll a D20, including you. That would be better. Ooh, I do like that. Oh, Ooh. never mind. Actually, I think, oh, I think never mind. Gosh. We're going to take that. No, like, <laughs> mathematically, we couldn't get the one through five at that point. Well, we could get a, if we all rolled one, we could have yeah, got a five. Yeah, we all rolled a one. Sure. Yeah. And I wasn't going to tell Eli that, and he wouldn't have figured it out on his <laughs> own. <laughs> and, um, but, but he's got an 87, so it doesn't matter. Oh, you know what I just realized? Everybody has to do 10 jumping jacks before they roll dice now. I just uh, I don't know if I know <laughs> That's my new rule. See, now we're taking advantage of everybody's disabilities. Hey, hey, well, you know what, Eli? I, I, I have a sneaking suspicion that's going to take you out before me. So uh, <laughs> you roll a lot more fucking dice. Yeah. Too. <laughs> Here's your tape. <laughs> you got a 33% raise. <laughs> you appear on a small house's second floor inside the bronze citadel. Almost the instant you arrive, you hear someone call up the stairs. Charon, is that you? Honey, where have you been? We've been worried sick. Did you miss your teleport? No, ma, I didn't miss my teleport. I got attacked by fire snakes. Oh, fire snakes. Those are a real motherfucker. Well, come on down and have some supper. <laughs> I hear you got some friends up there with you. How would she hear? <laughs> we haven't made a sound. <laughs> and then as you all make your way downstairs, she adds, Oh, what's this? You brought smooth heads to eat. Isn't that lovely? And he says, no, ma, ma, these are the guys that saved me from the fire snakes. I brought them back to thank them. She just calls a slur word? Yeah, it's your smooth heads. It's not a slur. It's just a fun thing that nobody has to think <laughs> more about. <laughs> so you're telling me we don't get to eat them? No, ma, we're not going to eat them. Well, okay, well, I suppose you can all have some of this soup I made. Don't worry, it doesn't contain any smooth heads yet. <laughs> and you can have a short rest. I'm going to investigate the soup. I give her a quick sting on my loot too. Nice. And, you know, like the joke. She whips out like a fucking uh, demonic bass guitar. Yeah. And she riffs back at you. She's like, doo -doo 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 she's like, this guy knows how to fuck. <laughs> Have some soup and take a short rest. Should I fuck her? No, uh, w listen, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not here to judge. Judge your journey. We've already been to tentacle tent, so whatever sort of <laughs> chasteness this party had besides Vardos is gone. I'm going to like hit on her through my loot. Is that going to be like an athletics check or what? No, it's a persuasion check. That's a pers well, no, I don't you, love you, you've that. mastered that persuasion check. That's good. I'm yeah, investigating also, um, the soup. I got a nat 20. It doesn't nat have any 20. Yeah, it's just a normal vegetable soup. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Demonic vegetables. Gross. I'm going to do a performance check to see if my hitting on her with the loot accomplishes. Yeah, you need to hit a two to fuck this old lady. She's in. <laughs> well, I have a plus 10. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> yeah, this is a net. You give a, what's a, pa a passive fuck this old lady is what you have. <laughs> All right, so you all help yourselves to a short rest. <laughs> Damien gets a little old lady devil nookie. Charun turns to you guys after you're all rested up and done fucking his mom and says, All right, <laughs> where you guys want to go next? I mean, if I can help you show you around or anything, I mean, not, not to be rude, but I can tell you guys are from around here. So if I can help you in any way, I really want to. Well, I believe we have to go ahead and... Let the commander know what's going on. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. I, I can't believe that you didn't do that already. Well, no, I was sitting here with you having some soup. Okay. But I bet when General Bell finds out that he's been accidentally sending all his greatest soldiers into a lake of fire, oh, he's going to be so upset. I mean, that is what he catapulted us directly into. So I know, I, I, don't I know. know. He's going to be so mad. I don't know that he is, but okay. Or we could go straight to the so straight to the lady. I'm chased. I never go straight to the lady. <laughs> <laughs> and he gives Damien a dirty look. And he's like, you see that, Damien? Some people don't go straight to the lady. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mom, Damien. When in hell. <laughs> bard's gonna bard. All yeah. right, let's go to uh, the Capitol, right? Capitol building? You mean the... Okay. You, you've been... To two buildings. You've technically been to four buildings. You've been to a knife salesman. Yes. You've been to a bar you got kicked out of. Uh -huh. How do I know that? Doesn't matter. You also <laughs> know that you've been to a castle and you've been to the barracks. Castle. That's the word I was talking about. Yes, yes, castle. castle you want to yes, go to yes, the yes, barracks yes, okay. before we go to the castle? No, I think he did that on purpose. I'm not going to lie. I did like a tiny bit of reading up on the levels of hell and everything, like in the D&D &D lore before Nerd. we did this. <laughs> I read a little bit of Dante, and here's the yeah. suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> the general in the barracks, I'm probably ruining Eli's. No, he's given you this information, so this is great. The general in the barracks is trying, most likely, according to like the what you know is in the D&D &D books, overthrow Azariel mm. and take over the first level of hell. Oh, does that mean he's on our team? Do we want to beat Azariel? Well, I don't know. Do we want to beat Ball or do we want to beat Azariel? No, we don't. We wanted to get on her good side so she would give us the key. Right. To the next one. Exactly. Yeah. So we would probably turn him in, turn Ball in. So I'm saying we should go to Azariel and let her know that he threw us into a swamp. Right. Or we could go to him and try and... Go to the army base where he is like the head god of the army base and like dethrone him. No, not forcefully. dethrone him. But, Absolutely not. But come up with more information that we could present to Azariel. Why don't we find a mouse and let them? <laughs> I'm going to look for a mouse. I feel like the move is we, we narc on the general to Azariel to get Azariel's trust, right? Right. But do we have any evidence of anything? All we have is that like, you know, we got... Well, we have the fact that like you could go up to her and say... I read the D&D &D lore and here's yeah. the thing. Because, <laughs> I mean, all that really happened was we got thrown to the front line like we were supposed to and the all the soldiers were already dead because they'd been beaten by demons. All right, so I feel like logically speaking, the last time we went to the castle, Azariel was very nice to us and last time we went to the barracks, we were catapulted into a lake of goddamn fire. <laughs> so I, I'm voting for the castle. That's pretty solid reason. Yes, I, I feel like this is a solid... Solid thing to do. Yes, correct. Okay. All right. So Charon leads you to Zariel's castle. I did not find a mouse, by the way. <laughs> oh, right. You rolled an invest. You rolled an eight, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't see a mouse, but that mouse from earlier, not the Founzy mouse, the other one, he slaps you in the face again and runs away before ah! you can get him because of your investigation. God damn it. <laughs> Back to the man. If anyone wants some merch from me, I'm the new mouse. <laughs> I'm going to claw it. I'm going to... No, you can't. You failed your investigation, Jay. He it's slapped you around. It's to Too late. Oh, God damn it. I told you, you got to get a 20 to get him, and he's gone. He's already oh, way gone. Hate that guy. All right, so you wend your way to Zariel's <laughs> castle once again. <laughs> I feel like I run after the mouse for a second and smash into a wall when the mouse runs through the wall. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yeah. Sure. And then you're a pug. As oh, <laughs> the ultimate transition. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so you wend your way back to Zerio's castle and the old guard that you saw and tr uh, tried to give a little coke to who Damien moved so much with his My Immortal performance mm -hmm. about a day or so ago is still there. And he says, well, well, hello. Back from the front line, are you? We are. Uh, so tell me, did you, did you manage to get some news? Because uh, I can clear her schedule if you have something for me. Indeed, we did. Oh, wonderful. You said clear her schedule as though that was a euphemism for something sexual. I would like to ensure that it wasn't before we go any further. No, I just, I don't know if you guys remember, but her schedule is mostly just like wailing, moaning, screaming, yelling, fighting, right? And so it's much. always safe to assume that we don't remember. Okay. Yes. No, it's, it's, um, <laughs> oh, it's and it's still kind of sexual. sexual. I'm a cat. Yeah. <laughs> just be clear. <laughs> All right, very well, this way, but um, try, and I know this is a lot to say, try not to upset her. So the further you go into the castle after this guard, the stranger it becomes. It's obvious that this place was once a towering terror of gothic and demonic architecture, but someone has been redecorating? Stained glass windows have been destroyed. Furniture lies pulped and charred in piles everywhere. In short, someone has fucked this place up. And you have a hunch who it might be. <laughs> Is it Melania Trump setting up for Christmas? Because <laughs> that's what it sounds like. <laughs> As you reach the doors of the main receiving area, you can hear an ungodly demonic voice screaming accompanied by the occasional crash or bang. And the guard turns to you and says, look, I warned you about this at the door, but nobody has been able to speak to Zariel for centuries. At best, a few have merely survived the encounter. When you go in there, be careful. Okay. Well then. I'm going to go in there carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go in with like Start with like a, a joke or like a present Ooh. or how we ease into that. I feel like a joke is the way to go. Why don't you why don't you start off with a joke? You know what? Wait, why don't why don't can we just peep through the door? Oh, uh, yeah. Who wants to peep? My vow doesn't allow it. What, what, what kind of a check would it be? A stealth check. Not an investigation? No, I have plus four. I have plus five. Go for it. But I have been rolling shitty today. Sixteen. There you go. It's a 16. Yeah. So through the door, you can see that it looks like most of the furniture in the room has been just like absolutely obliterated and you can't see anything, but you mm. would swear you hear the flapping of wings. Oh, okay. I have an idea. What are you thinking? I'm thinking I must cast Nathar's mischief and I shall tell you why. Okay. All right, so it's a D4 situation. One of four things will happen. One, she's charmed. Two, a, a bunch of bouquets of flowers appear around. There's no way we're going to charm her. She's like... Three? Super powerful. Three. Like she's 25% charmable, exactly. Oh my God, she will be giggling. If it's she can, a fit of giggles, incapacitated. Four, drops of molasses hover over the area, making it difficult terrain until the start of your next turn, and she's flying. This is going to be hilarious. Okay, wait. <laughs> There's drops of hovering molasses in the air. Or a giggling fit, or the air smells like pie, and she is charmed. I just have a feeling she will... She's like a goddess. I like, feel like I don't two, think yeah, two of those choices, and she's going to be super duper pissed. Yeah. Oh, damn it. And one of them, she's going to be like, mm. and possibly the third, because then who's going to clean up all the flowers? <laughs> molasses. <laughs> and the molasses. I mean, oh, yes, because she cares so much about cleaning up this place, as we've seen. Fair, but that still leaves two that are going to like be, probably piss her off. All right, fine. We could try and, so she wants info from the front lines, right? So I could, I have an actor feat, which will allow <gasps> me to- Hit her with a song and dance number. Well, what I'm thinking is I can act like somebody <laughs> oh, else. Wait, I'll roll a two. There will be a bouquet of flowers. It'll burst out. You come in with a razzle dazzle, and then. Uh, <laughs> uh, wait, what I'm what I'm uh, thinking wait. is. Oh, you know, oh, flaming backflip. 
Ah, oh, perfect, perfect. Flaming backpick goes in, <laughs> and uh, and then and then there's a dog. Do you have a pork pie hat in there somewhere, perhaps? What I'm thinking is I could act like the general and the little squirrel and relay to her exactly what happened on the front lines because that's what she's, she's looking for information on the front lines, right? Yeah, then yeah. I'll run in, I'll like run up the wall, do a flip, <laughs> and I'll be like, make them laugh, make. I don't know what's <laughs> happening right now. This are is we doing a musical? Indeniably perfect plan. Mine or yours? <laughs> I actually kind of like this plan. I think we do it as a musical. I think we present it to her. <laughs> As a musical with maybe some, does anybody have some like flashy light spells? I can make flashy lights. There you go. As a cantrip. I have a sword that does that too. (laughs) No, you don't. (laughs) I do. (laughs) I do. Apparently it's called Tira Lick My Balls. That's been changed somehow. Oh, did someone change your sword? We love licking uh, my balls. I'm looking at, I'm looking at, I, I'm looking at my brain that has what the sword is in oh, it. Oh, would you would you like to read the description of your new sword, Heath, for the folks at home? Just <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God! Oh my God! I'm so excited. Uh, oh my God! I'm so yeah, t- t- Tara licked my balls. Admires great beauty, music, fine art, poetry, probably musicals because music, uh, or maybe it doesn't. It actually says that right now. It just screams when I hit stuff. Is what it says. <laughs> and uh, I would, I in my head, I imagine it as a kind of obnoxious uh, woman from Boston, Massachusetts in a different universe. I'd love you to imagine it as a man. Oh, no. It's, okay. It's Cecil doing fun. <laughs> I was like, hey, man, let's, let's fucking play the hits for the folks at home. It's Cecil doing the Boston lady voice, everybody. He's talking about Cecil. Cecil. So delightful. When I'm reliving what we went through, do you want to hit the sword every time somebody in the story screamed just to give it more flavor? Oh, yeah. Obviously, you do yeah. sound effects if you can do sound effects. Yeah, so Done. we've got like a full production going. Do we want to just burst in and do it? What? We've got a full production going. I'm going to act out the two things. You're going to make a light show and he's going to contribute screams. And I will stay back in the hallway just in case this all goes horribly wrong. <laughs> flaming backflip. That's I, excuse, probably smart. Excuse me. I thought you could do a flaming backflip. I saw you do one earlier. Me? No. Well, I'm talking to, to fucking Square over here. F- flaming? Flaming? Varos, can you do a flaming backflip? You literally walked through fire in like the the first episode. I try not to be showy with those types of things. Oh, okay. Okay, but can you? Just because we're doing a show. I recently had a <laughs> heart attack, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. oh, no. Can you just do it once? Did Vardos have a heart attack between well, episodes? Oh, well, you know, he's in hell. You know, he died of something. I don't know. Sure. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Sure. I mean, I guess we all kind of had a heart attack. Yeah, it's actually, it's secret lore that I only told Noah. Vardos did not die of the fireballs that guy threw. He just had a heart attack in the room. Yeah. <laughs> kind of got swept up in the rubble. Okay, and just for the record, the sword, even after Eli spitefully re- rewrote the whole thing, it can shed a bright light with a 10-foot radius. Sweet. Let's yeah. first thing all right. do it. Cool. But you didn't read the whole description, so it can't. Dim light for an additional 10 feet. So to be clear, I just want to be clear what's happening. <laughs> yes, by all means. You're by. bursting through these doors. Yep. Yes. To do a surprise musical for an angry hell god. Yes. Right. yes. I'll be singing, <gasps> yes. make them laugh as I run up the wall and do okay. a flip and probably hurt myself. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm going to preface it by saying news from the front line, madam. Okay. So everyone, mm. give me a single sentence of what you're doing as these doors open. We'll roll some dice and then we'll take it from there. Achoom. Wait, before we start, I am going to take off my wizard hat and put on a sparkly <laughs> bowler cap. Obviously. Okay. So Obviously. give me a single sentence. What are you doing, Achoom? I am prestidigitation. I am creating a shower of sparks and a faint musical notes. Love it. Okay, great. Gravy, you're going to go for a wall run, right? Uh, yeah, so Gravy <laughs> is going to try to, uh, he'll be singing at the moment he, you know, hits the floor. Just start, start. It's the, get in the room. You're already singing. Yep. yep I run yep. up the wall. I try to do a backflip as best I can. I also have my awesome sword. It's shining a spotlight on. Oh, you're going to do this armed. Yeah. On, I'm, I'm shining the spotlight on a, a choom to be like the star of the show. Love it. Clear. May I, may I offer some advice? No, no, we're please, not. Please, no, please, please. No, there's no advice. Okay. We've already, we're, we're saying single sentences. Anna, Anna, you can just say the advice. You can. Hey, uh, maybe, like. maybe try to try to run up the side of the door and not run at the angel god. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to like take a turn, not directly at Yeah, no, I didn't think you were yeah. running at. Okay. You don't even know where she is, so there's no yeah, at I'm to gonna, be right. You're running up the wall. 
locate the the uh, very dangerous hell person and you know, make a yeah, turn obviously. 90 degrees and mm-hmm. run up a wall. Yeah. yeah, that's an acrobatics check. Can I just get that acrobatics check real quick? Can I just get that <sighs> acrobatics check real quick? You sure can. Also, shine the light on me, not on a tomb. Fucking actors. That's a seven. That's a seven. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Great. great. And then uh, we'll get to that in a se- We'll get to what happens in a second. <laughs> oh, and boy. then Damien, uh, what are you doing? I am going to <laughs> have my loot ready and I'm going to go in and I'm going to perform for her the entire thing that transpired at the front line. And okay. you will have a spotlight on you from my awesome yep. sword. Okay. Mm-hmm. Great. So. Although I will be like crumpled up on the floor, injured as I'm doing my best. <laughs> sure fucking will. <laughs> Boy, it's very likely to be happening. Vardos, you coming in or are you standing in the hall? I, I'm, I'm going to hang the fuck back and see how this goes. Nice. Okay, so Vardos, here's what you see. All right, you're sort of hanging back in the hall. The giant double doors to Zariel's chamber smash open with the force of gravy strength. This former <laughs> greeting room of the leader of Avernus is charred and destroyed beyond recognition. Every stick of wood has been burned. Every pane of glass has been broken. And above <laughs> it all, 50 feet in the air, is a burning terror. You've seen pictures of the heavenly hosts, but Zariel? Zariel is something else. Her wings, which used to be made of pure light, are now leathery and black. Her silver white skin has been burned a dark red with the power of her hatred. And the blindfold that all host angels wear has been removed. And you are staring directly into her dark <laughs> red, infernally glowing eyes. Can I, can I make a suggestion for you, um, Eli? This is yeah. Probably something you were going to do anyway. But when Heath goes, for, I know Heath got the bad uh, check on the, uh, the wall run. The room's burned. I think it'd be fucking hilarious physically if his feet just went right through the wall as he tried Ooh, to do that. I'm just, sure. I'm just throwing that out there as a possibility. I love that. Yeah, fucking and make him laugh. Donald, yeah, make oh him laugh God. style. Yeah. So here's here's what happens. Achum, you come in, you hit a perfect rassle tassel pose. Damien, you come in and you like strike your loot and begin to speak, and gravy just runs into your back, right, and just knocks you down face first onto the floor, but then he trips over you and does a front roll and his sword hits the ground and is like, "Ah!" and he's, uh, and then he's falls down, but he keeps rolling through like an ashy wall, like into the corner. And the sword keeps like clanking really long. It's like, clank, 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 clank. It's screaming all the time. It falls down some stairs. (laughs) You can hear it screaming. Yeah. It's like long spiral stairs that led to a dungeon. So like, Uh, it's going on for a for a while, for a while, and the light is flashing because it's got that spotlight right. thing. And Zariel watches all of this, and she lowers herself down. The Prince of Avernus lowers herself down till she hovers just a bit above your heads and says, "What up? What up? You guys ready to get squished?" <laughs> Everybody, roll initiative for me. Oh, <laughs> fuck yes. I rolled a 21 performance. She should be oh. enamored with us. You might, you might have rolled a 21 performance, but that. a golden retriever <laughs> fell on rolled top of you while you were doing it. I feel like with a 21, I like continue. Uh, as performing. Alan Rickman can tell you, there are some performances <laughs> that cannot make Die Hard 3 any better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Can I try to tell a joke? No. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Hey, everybody, just jumping in once again to thank you for listening to the show and a happy holidays to you. This episode comes out on the 21st if you're a patron and 22nd if you're not. But hey, if you're here in this part, you're not a patron because the patrons get a commercial little middle free version of the show. Just get to listen to the whole podcast all the way through. No ads, no interruptions from me. And they do that by giving us as little as a dollar over at patreon.com forward slash D and D minus. So why not join them? But I know what you're thinking. Eli, that's not enough for me. I love these middle parts. I love listening to your melodious and amazing voice. You are the guiding light 
that brings me in and out of the wonderful web of fantasy that you've woven for me, and I never want to let it go. Well, what if I told you that this holiday eve, Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, because I haven't finished the edit yet, but I will. The, this Christmas Eve, we have a very special Christmas patron-only bonus episode dropping for you. But not just that, a bonus episode dungeon mastered by the one and only Heath and right, that's right. It's got Santa Claus. It's got Christmas. And Heath leads us on the way. And I will tell you, spoiler alert, it fucking ruled. And you can only listen to it by being a patron over at patreon.com forward slash D and D minus all spelled out. And hey, if you don't have money, you can't get that patron bonus episode. That's okay. One way for us to forgive you is take a little holiday cheer and throw it onto our review page, wherever you get your podcasts. Those five-star reviews help new people find out about the show. And I also get a nice little email that says, hey, Eli, someone liked your podcast and wrote five stars on the internet. And, and around the holidays, I think we could all use a little more cheer. All right? This was a weird thematic thing to put in the middle because a lot of people will be listening to the back catalog. But you know what? They could become a patron and then they don't have to hear this part. It's too long. It's too long. I'm stopping. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. All right. So while you're rolling your initiative to review the situation here, Achoom, you were standing there in a perfect razzle dazzle. Dave, you are halfway through a wall head first. Gravy. Gravy, sorry. Damien, you are face down among the ashes of this church floor. <laughs> and Vardos, you are standing in the hall. Damien, that's a 22. I appreciate Indeed, that. I had a 15. I think that was a four for me. <laughs> 15 for Vardos. And a 13 for a choom. Four for Gravy and a 13 for a choom. Love it. Let me send you all the map for this particular encounter. Ooh. Ooh, she big. Yeah, she's yes, big. she big, is big. big. Stop summoning frogs for yourself. I it's very love serious them. time. Okay. Oh, I thought <laughs> I thought Eli was doing that. I was like, okay, so there's a bunch of frogs. <laughs> no. No, Anna was just no. like, I like frogs. I will have four now, please. <laughs> All right. Damien, you were up first. Ooh. Okay. Can I tell a joke before we start the fight? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Talking's a free action unless it is an it, unless it is a joke that you want to do anything. Hey, Daryl, classic. <laughs> you're you're a demon, right? What um what kind of uh, cuisine do devils like, Daryl? Daryl, Daryl, <laughs> Daryl. Do you hear me? Hey, Damien, are you gonna start your? I'm not your... gonna go until he, she answers. Heath. Oh, okay. Is it deviled eggs? Is it deviled eggs? I feel like it's deviled eggs. <laughs> is it? It's, it's, it Zariel's not gonna answer. It's <laughs> is 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 soul food. Soul food because uh, devil collects. Yeah. I guess I can go now. Dave, make a persuasion oh, roll for me. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help myself. Dave, make a persuasion. A persuasion roll. roll. I'm gravy, by the way. Right. Sorry, gravy. <laughs> Sorry, make a performance check for me. Love that. That's not great. Seven. That's a seven. That's accurate or at least I would say that's an overshot of how good my joke was, <laughs> to be fair. Yeah, she's going to cast a fireball at you. <gasps> Wait, but I'm first. Ooh. Yeah, no, this is a, a reaction to a joke. <laughs> so I bad. tried to tell a joke. Zariel did not say a fucking word as I was like, Zariel, <laughs> Zariel, I want to tell a joke. And then it was so bad, that joke. That a fireball is being shot at me now. Yeah. And that's fair. I I support all of it. <laughs> yeah. And you are going to take... Wow, you're not even asking him. Wait, I need... I'm going to roll for like uh, dodging or something. No, you can't dodge. You're stuck halfway in a wall. Uh, you can take 11 damage from that bolt from that of fire joke. that she shoots Got at it. you. <laughs> okay. I should have told oh, a better you. joke. All right, Damien, what's up? <laughs> okay. Well, the loot's already out. She is staring directly down at you. You have her attention. She is not distracted by hurting gravy. Just now. And the loot is like already in my hands and I'm like already halfway through. I'm going to mm -hmm. whip my hair to the other side that it was falling on and I'm going <laughs> to start singing. One, nothing wrong with me. Two, nothing wrong with me. Three, nothing wrong with me. Let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> And I'm going to cast Dissonant Whispers. One, nothing wrong with me. Two, nothing 
Oh, so you're doing an attack on her. Yeah, roll it. Uh, Do you want me to read it or no? We have done that spell already, but you know, we haven't done it this season. So go ahead and... It is, you whisper a discordant melody that only one creature of your choice within range can hear, racking it with terrible pain. It is a wisdom 15 save. On a failed save, 3d6 psychic damage, and the must immediately use its reaction, if available, to move as far as its speed allows away from you. On a successful save, the target takes half as much damage and doesn't have to move away. Yeah, so here's the weird thing, Damien. You can tell when someone's resisting your magic. Zarion does not resist this magic. Your song curves itself around her, right? You can sort of see your magical energy as it moves itself around her. You watch it enter her angelic ears and you see black, ugly blood start to pour out of them. And she goes, ha, oh, love it. <laughs> and there was a reddish glow around her when you entered. And that reddish glow has just intensified. Fuck. <laughs> Movements, bonus actions, anything. So she also moves as far away as possible? On her turn, she has to, yeah. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. Nope, no bonus actions, no movement. I'm going to stay directly under her, loot in hand. All right. How big of a room are we in? So like the furthest away she can move is So is this what? is the great news. You can take that ruler and actually measure. <laughs> right. You can't room. measure the height of the room, though. Or like... Oh, the height of the room. Well, she was 50 feet in the air earlier. So. Yeah, the room's like 100 feet high. Think cathedral ceilings? Sure. Ooh. Okay. How high are cathedral <laughs> Is it gothic or... Um... I think it depends on the cathedral, man. <laughs> oh, well, that fucking sucks. They're 13 feet tall what? at the time. No, nope. That's not real. That's not real. You're wrong. I mean, theoretically, yeah, you can have the cathedral be any size. <laughs> That's what comes up when you first Google it. It says cathedral ceilings oh, should be at least 13 feet tall at the top. Mm. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking how high they are. You just get to say whatever you want. <laughs> No, because sometimes when I do that, you guys are like, but there's no, a it's fine. It's fine. In that room. it's fine. So now we're going to find out how high. Th- oh. We're all cool with 100. That was oh. reasonable. We were cool with 100. High- it's no, a demonic this cathedral. It how can be however how large you want. Are the ceilings of no. See, this is actually my hell. So <laughs> 35 meters. All right. Close. A little over 100 feet. Yeah, yeah. I nailed it. <laughs> the one time I've nailed it in my entire this is life. It's like a smaller right. cathedral. Was that question pertinent to anything or can I do Zeriel? No, turn? I was just curious how far Zeriel was going to like be away from us in, in their turn. Yeah, so Zeriel's going to move backwards. She flaps her wings and she's going to fire that bolt, but she's going to give you the double gun. She goes, this guy fucking gets it. And you see that red glow around her s- sort of stop surrounding her for a moment and travel down her arms. And she's going to fire two bolts at you, Damien. Wow, we really are fighting her. I thought we yeah. were going to tell her. Fire bolts? Well, technically they're guided bolts. but Right, I have fire resistance. That's why I'm asking. Uh, yeah, make a range spell attack. That is a 16. Yep, that hits. And a 18. Yeah. Yeah, those will both hit. So that's going to be 8d6. Okay, well, I'm probably dead if the fire resistance doesn't work. That is 32 damage, and you're resistant to fire or immune to fire? Resistant. Resistant. So that's going to be 16 damage. Okay. Vardas, you are up. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to do a dive roll, and I am going to uh, restore, I'm going to lay hands on Damien and restore 15 of his hit points. Make a perception check for me, Vardas. (laughs) Zero. A z- no, oh, seven minus one. I thought it was a seven. I thought that was a one. Yeah, okay. it's a seven, not a one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> With a six, here's, here's what I will give you. When Zariel sees you healing your comrade, the red outline around her fades, and she says, what the beans are you doing? <laughs> beans? Bonus actions, anything? Uh, I don't think I have any attack <laughs> that's really going to reach somebody that far away, so I think I'm done there. Nice. All right. Achoom, you are in truly a perfect jazz hands. You've got a beautiful (laughs) sparkly bowler hat on, and lights are emitting from your fingertips. And I'm doing spotlight on on him. 
<laughs> nope, you're halfway nope. into a wall. Okay, but no. my sword's out. <laughs> no, your sword is thirty hundred thousand feet down. <laughs> oh no, you don't have your voice. sword. You lost your sword. Since my first plan obviously didn't work, I'm going to cast a, the. Since my second plan obviously didn't work, I'm going to go with the first plan. I'm going to cast Nathair's mischief. <laughs> I fucking love it. Excellent. So you you talked about this out in the hall. Roll that D4 for me. I want to know what happens. Okay. I also want to know what happens, damn it. One second, I'm Mon casting one. it. Uh, uh, that, one second. <laughs> <laughs> boop, 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 two. Roll. That's a one. Uh, that's that's a the charm. All right. So, the, okay. The smell of apple pie fills the air. <laughs> and each creature must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become charmed by me until the start of my next turn. So that's all of us, right? All right. Everybody make wisdom saving throws. Everybody. I'll make one for Zariel. Ooh, 10. 19. Also 10. I keep wasting my shit on good, my good rolls on nothing. I can be <laughs> charmed by a cat. It's my natural <laughs> fucking state. <laughs> The smell of pie fills the room and the red light. Uh, make a perception check for me, Achum. Me? Oh, absolutely. I will, I will 100% do that for you. One sec. Perception. Yeah. That, my friend, is a 22. Okay, so here's what I'll give you. Achum, you've perused many ancient tomes as your time as a wizard cat. As one does. And you recognize that red energy that's growing when people attack her and lowering when she sees like kindness or smells pie as her demonic energy. And the smell of pie accompanied by your razzle dazzle performance <laughs> has drained her demonic energy almost entirely. So much so <laughs> that she now sinks mm. to the floor. She is no longer flying. And she starts to move towards you and is like, is that, is that pie? <laughs> All right, tell her uh, no. <laughs> lady, uh, I just wanted to let you know that the, the front lines, you sent us over to the front lines to see what's going on and why, what's going on in the battle. And uh, we did go that, do that. Uh, we were catapulted out there and I believe your commander purposefully tried to throw us into the lake much like many of the other people he sent out there. And I believe there is nobody out there. He is trying to, Specifically, oh uh, God, you're words, nailing words, this. Words, you're that, that absolutely guy, nailing that it. guy, Bill, uh, is trying to fuck you. I think I believe he is trying to sabotage your reign. Just really quickly, Morgan knows told you that, not Damien. So I don't know that our characters actually know. Oh, I thought I 100 thought he was. That's all pretty intuitable, except that his name is Bell, not Ball. Oh, did I say his name? Uh, yeah, you said Bill. Oh, I didn't mean to because I had no idea what his name was. Well, there you go. Fantastic. Great. But yeah, no, there, <laughs> none of that information is information that hasn't been given to you by characters in the game. So that, yeah, that's all fine. Oh, hey, do we still have Charon with us? No, he fucking pieced <laughs> out I I, when okay, you guys yeah, yeah. tried to do a razzle dazzle dance number in a fucking... <laughs> <laughs> in the queen of hells, in the, the ruler of hells. Also, chain. Morgan fucked his mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Morgan fucked his mom. I feel like he missed out on a hell of a story, though. This is like, this would be the story at the pub. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, this, this is a uh, lot. There's, there's a big follow up to that. Trust me. I kind of, I kind of summarize things. That's like kind of my gift. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Achum, mm. I need you to make a persuasion check before, for me. But before you mm. do, I need you to know that this persuasion check is very, very important. Um, she's charmed by me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you advantage on that persuasion check okay, as a result. She's better. also the prince of hell. So, mm, you know, before okay. you roll it, can I... <laughs> no, it's only as a bonus action. I was going to give you inspiration, but I can't. Also, it smells like pie. So... <laughs> yeah, that's why you get... That's why you get the... Uh, that's why you get the advantage. And, and Achum, my nose is bleeding for an effort to make a little kittens lost their mittens joke as a re in relation to oh, that smell. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I'm trying not to stress too hard because of the ticker, but you know, I'm just. I'm just right, obviously. All right, yeah. So no, I'm going to do that again. That was a that nine. That was a nine. So here we go, everybody. Are you ready for me to do this? Are we sure I cannot add bardic inspiration? That's a one. Okay, that so is it's a, a nine. one. It's a nine. So it's a nine. I think nine is actually rather, uh, you know, you what? Get to have those together, right? You get to <laughs> fine. Still wouldn't matter. 
and dandy. Zariel touches the ground. And is still charmed. I am so charming. I, I, I am Achoom. a very, you know Let what? Weave. I lost my Let little weave. mittens. One second. <laughs> I, meow. <laughs> Throws down the puss in boots meow. eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would like to flop onto my back and show her my delicious, Mm-mm. fluffy. Nope. Tummy. You made your, we know how it goes. You fucking fall into a big pile of shit if you do anything. <laughs> You fall over gravy. My leg is so far above my head right now. <laughs> Achoom, Zariel lowers to the ground. And for just a moment, as she towers over you, and she is giant, she is an angelic host. You can see the angel she once was. And she leans down and says, Are you telling the truth, little friend? And then she just gently takes your paws in her hands. And says, or are you lying? Make another persuasion (gasps) check with advantage. Okay. Here's what I will tell you. If this goes badly, it's going to hurt. Can I, can I, I first? Nope. Okay. You sure can't. You can roll a dice twice. Can I please add bardic inspiration? Nope. (sighs) That that was your bonus action from your last turn. That's a 15. So 15. Again. Just in case, in case I crit. <gasps> that my love is a 19. That's a 19. Oh, okay. What do you say? I say, I would never, ever lie to you. And I'm going to start purring a little. She's accompanied by Luke. <laughs> <laughs> the red glow that surrounded Zariel is gone. And though she's still a giant heavenly host, the fight is gone from her as well. And she looks at you all almost as though waking from a dream and says, you're, you're all the first people to try to talk to me in so long. Did you kill someone's dog? No, no my did your brother, brother do did. It? Okay. My brother yeah. did. And then my dad covered it up and everyone just knows that, right? Like he has a talk show, which mm. is just buck wild. Yeah, totally. You know, I started watching hell as an angel and they told me not to get involved in the demon devil war. But the more I watched it, the more it was all I could think about. It filled me with rage and all I wanted to do was get in the fight. And then Asmodeus appeared and offered me a chance to get in there. But It was the opposite of what I thought it would be. It wasn't glorious and bloody. It was boring and tragic. And I haven't been able to think about anything else until you, little kitty cat. Meow. Now, what did you say about General Bell? Oh, uh, he is super duper trying to uh, sabotage your effort in the war. He's like launching your troops directly into fire lakes into and shit. Fiery lakes, indeed. Indeed. Mm. I believe you. And with that, Zariel throws her hand in the air and a jet of flame spins off high into the sky. Then she sort of gently picks you up a chum and places you to the right and then spins her finger in a circle where her finger points downwards. A circle with a pentagram inside it gets carved into the stone between you. And she waves her hands once, twice. The lines of the carvings grow red. And then, standing there, taken quite by surprise, is General Bell. And he looks around and says, Oh, Mistress Zariel, to, uh, to what do I owe the pleasure? You sent us into fire, and I hate you for it. How dare you? Yeah, um, B-Dog, Smoothhead said you're sending my front line into the hibachi, if you know what I mean. What gives? And the general looks at you all and says, Um, your your highness, I I don't know what these traitors are talking about, but I can assure you that this is all. And she says, save it, beefcake. And then she points at her eyes, right? The dark, glowing, red, angelic eyes and says, I got an eye for when people are lying and it's all over you. It's like two Sarah Huckabee Sanders yeah. arguing with each other. It's yeah, kind of one amazing. with a southern accent, exactly. <laughs> they both have southern accents. Right? 
And General Bell looks at her for a moment and says, You think you can come take my kingdom from me without a fight? The day you set foot in hell, I should have torn your wings off and unscrewed your head and answered the consequences of Asmodeus, whatever they were. And he bares his fists, ready to fight. And Zeriel holds up a finger and says, Well, don't worry about it, brother. You'll get your chance. Because before I summoned you, I called him. Oh, shit. And then he's there. The monster. The thing that bumps in the night. Asmodeus. There's no great flourish. There's no crackle of lightning. He's just standing there. But even several feet shorter than the general and probably a dozen feet shorter than Zerio, and even in his relatively harmless looking form of a young-ish handsome man with silver shoulder length hair, everything inside of all of you tells you to be afraid of this being. And he turns to Zerio and says the first words that you all ever hear him speak. He says, take them. And Zeriel does. She wraps the four of you in her wings, flying around the room, which upon closer examination, you realize are not black and leathery. By the way, Gravy, she sort of (laughs) unsticks you from the wall and um, uses her telekinetic powers to pull your sword from several floors below her. There's actually kind of an awkward pause where you hear it screaming on the way up the stairs. I was waiting for all the speeches to end to be like, I'm stuck in a fucking wall over here because somebody help me out. You've been giving speeches and doing magic for like Half an hour, I haven't done shit. Stuff, my legs are in a wall. <laughs> Don't try to do a wall run. So, so she gives you your sword back. She wraps the four of you in her wings. And she goes to fly you up out of the hole in the roof, but hesitates. Flying you instead to just above the rafters, where you can overhear Asmodeus and Bell speaking. And as she does, she places a finger to her dark red lips and then presses a key into your hand, Achu. And then she flies away. (gasps) You're not sure how it's possible for a towering devil to look so full of terror at a small human-looking man, but Bell does. It's clear that despite what he might have said about confronting Asmodeus, he had no intention to, that that is, in fact, his worst nightmare. But his face is painted with resolution. And he starts to speak, but Asmodeus says silence. And you're unsure if it's a spell or the power of his will, but Bell's voice dies in his throat. And Asmodeus says, you disrespect me, General. Not with your betrayal. That is in your nature. You disappoint me with your sloppiness. Did you think I did not know that you were trying to lose this war, that you were sacrificing this world out of spite for your lost position. And Bell sort of gets control of his speech again and says, you you never even gave me a chance to face the demons, my lord. I could have. You could have what, Bell? Defeated them? Maybe. But I didn't want someone who could defeat them, General. I needed someone to fight them. I opened the portal to the demons, Bell. I brought them here to fight you and every other spoiled, ugly, cruel little devil in this place. Because it's what you all wanted. It's the hell you deserve. And General Bell says, Lord Asmodeus, I helped you when you arrived here. I have kept your secret from everyone. Nobody knows. Yes, says Asmodeus. And nobody ever will. And in a flash, with a sickening crunch, Asmodeus has punched his arm up to the shoulder into General Bell's chest. I would like to shit uh, Gravy's pants. (laughs) I'd like to roll for my pants being shat by somebody else, whatever that means. You can't resist. No, we already (laughs) determined this. It just happens. Sorry. Yeah. But I want to know how good I do it. No, you can't. You can't resist. It's not a, it's no, it's not a matter of scale. It's not about you. If we've had to say this as a cast... I got got literally a crit fail, just if you want to use that. You know what? You were already shitting your pants (laughs) while Achum cast the spell to shit your pants, so now you double shat your pants. pants. You shit me? 
I thought she yeah. climbed in and shit your pants for you. Your front and back are filled with shit. When everyone <laughs> turns to you after this dramatic moment, you are going to be in a sumo suit of your own shit. <laughs> oh, Nice. The rolled animal That's handling. called a mawashi, by the way. <laughs> you know, we can't leave that on the curb. That would be a municipal fine. <laughs> we have to clean that up. The giant devil barely has time to look surprised. And then he slumps to the ground, dead. And Asmodeus is gone. And we're way up on a bunch of fucking rafters. <laughs> you are way up on a bunch of rafters. And oh boy. shit is just pouring down <laughs> off of the rafters. <laughs> just full. Every inch of him is covered in shit. And every time he moves, a new leak springs like oh old God. school sort of blood effect. So his leg is like covered in shit and drywall, essentially. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> just everywhere. Cool. Bad dog. Bad guy. Oh, no. I'm gonna rub his nose in it. <laughs> oh God! It's sheet rock. <laughs> it's sheet. It's like shit. Carl is not hard to find. The river runs through the near center of the city, and at the end of it is a deep black drop into nothingness. At the precipice sits Carl in his boat, reading a newspaper. And when he sees you all, he says, Well, slap my mouth and call me Sally. You survived. Hey, it's pretty good. You guys might be all right up here. Uh, I don't suppose you got a key from Zariel, did you? I'm going to roll for slapping his mouth and calling I was going to say, and I'll call him Sally. You go <laughs> okay, all right. Cool. Just make a, <laughs> make a dexterity check for me. Just, just like a straight up and down dexterity roll, if you don't mind. Just, uh, 12. 12. That's a 12. Go ahead. You, you do yours. Um, 11. Yeah, you guys go to slap and the cool mouse jumps up and catches <laughs> you in between each of his little mouse fingers and says, nobody fucks with Carl in my hell. And then he kicks a chum in the balls and disappears. Oh, I want to curse him so bad. Oh, shit. That mouse is hilarious, though. That Come mouse on. is going to be around uh, a lot. You gotta admit. Okay, just because I don't want to like ride in a boat with fucking... Shit, dog! I'm gonna, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna clean his pants. This is gravy. All right, yeah. So gravy is unshitified after some really intense magic, and Carl sort of welcomes you all onto the boat and says, "You all really are something special, aren't you?" All right, hop on board. Next stop, this. Hey, a chew. Mm. Hold on to your hats. <laughs> Go. <laughs> nice. chair to the face from the <laughs> devil. Oh, <shit. laughs> My God, that's Asmodeus' music. <laughs> <laughs> there are no bad seasons here, but he suspects there are some that are better than others. And this evening, as a breeze blows through a day that never got hot enough to be unpleasant, but stayed warm enough to enjoy the sunshine, he suspects that this is one of the best seasons. His son, only five, pulls moonlight from the sky, weaving and unweaving it into solid objects, but does not see him watching. If he did, his power would falter under his own nerves, but he sees the potential in him. He sees the wonders this boy will weave, and he is full of love for him as he was the day when he was born. But then his wife snaps them both out of their reverie. It is getting late, and food waits on the table. The moonlight sails back up into the sky once again, respecting the laws of nature. He takes his son's tiny hand in his own, and they go inside. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.